today on City Line. It's home day and we're starting in the heart of the home. The, the kitchen is where you make those bigger design statements that you might not make everywhere else. How to elevate your island. Then just painting it a different color than the rest of the kitchen. It's going to draw your eye to it. Then from ordinary to extraordinary, easy steps to update your space. Paint can just do so much in any space, outside yeah. or inside. And later, I learned how to frost a cake like a pro. So grab your turntable. Mm-hmm. Start wicka, wicka, wicka. She's a patient teacher. That's good, It's Tracy. not terrible at all. I love it. It's City Line with Tracy Moore. Welcome to Thursday. It is home day, and we have got some wonderful guests joining me today. Please welcome Sharon Gregg, Jyoti Nanra, and Jackie Glass back here in the studio with us today. I'm very excited. They're in the kitchen, and they think they're the lucky ones, but I'm the lucky one, because look what I'm standing beside. I am going to try to decorate a cake just like this, and I'm sure mine will look identical, right? <laughs> you don't want to miss that. That's coming up later in the show, but first, Let's start with a kitchen makeover that Sharon did. This kitchen was designed 15 years ago and it is still in fantastic shape for the family of four, but they are looking to do some simple upgrades without a full kitchen reno. Now, I know that color can be so transformative in small and big ways, so we're gonna look at a new color palette to bring a fresh new look to this kitchen. Color really is the key to changing the vibe in any space. And wow, this stunning teal blue wall tile is just makes such a strong color and textural design statement. The glossy glaze over that undulating texture just feels so fluid. And bringing it from the counter all the way up to the ceiling feels a lot more cohesive and contemporary. This is definitely the focal point in this kitchen. Now, we repeated it as the backdrop to the little coffee station, and then I love the color so much, I matched it to Vanderburg blue and painted the front door in the foyer area just to bring a little unexpected color into that area too. Now, aside from the wall tile, the only other cosmetic change was painting out the kitchen island. That dark brown espresso wood was looking a little dated, but pink came to the rescue. We used Benjamin Moore Advance in a pearl finish, so it's a nice soft satin finish, but the color is wrought iron. It's a nice soft black. Now, the two-tone design trend has been around for a while, but honestly, I think it's such an easy and interesting way to add character to a kitchen, so I think that trend is here to stay. This simple makeover really proves that if the layout is functional and the cabinets are still in great shape, you can really give a fresh new look without spending a lot of time or money. Oh my goodness. I mean, the color just punched the whole thing up. Sharon, you did an incredible job on that kitchen. The update was amazing, but yes, it was the color. No, it was fantastic. My friend who owns the house picked that tile, and when she showed it to me, I'm like, that deserves to be centerpiece yes. <laughs> in the kitchen. And a lot of times, Tracy, it's true that the kitchen is where you make those bigger design statements that you might not make everywhere else. Yeah. And then it kind of leads. It can, In that case, and in most cases, it ends up leading to bringing that color scheme throughout your house. So I think yeah. it's... If there's a reason why we spend a lot of our design dollars in the kitchen, right? <laughs> it's where everybody is and no one ever wants to leave. You know when you're entertaining people and you're like, you need a moment to just get things together? No one's going to leave your kitchen. So make sure you spend all the money in the kitchen because that's where everyone's going to hang out all the time. Absolutely. So you're going to show us uh, an island makeover. The island yeah. makeover we saw was absolutely beautiful. It makes it more of a showpiece. Yeah. You, the island in the kitchens now are just, they dominate the they, space. Exactly. They used to just be functional, right. but I think they're definitely a lot more than that. So if you want to level up your island, the first thing, of course, Sharon is going to say is paint it. Of course. I mean, that is yeah. the super simple way. Even just painting it a different color than the rest of the kitchen, it's going to draw your eye to it, right? Yes. And it's going to really change the, the space. Just yeah. like when you wear a lipstick, different color lipstick, it yes. changes your outfit. So think of it in that way that it can really become an accent and changing the color, obviously you can do any color, but I have some really great photos um, of a really typical builder white kitchen yeah. where they painted the island and the end cap mm. red, caliente. Oh, that looks good. Right? So warms it right up. It warms it right up. Makes mm -hmm. a big difference. And then one of my all-time favorite Benjamin Moore photos of a kitchen. This one has been around for a while. I absolutely love it. A teal 
island in a beautiful sort of country white oh, kitchen. Wow. And that, I think it's called Caribbean Blue Water. That is nice. And the combo with the yellow and the teal, it's like it just yeah. makes you really happy and joyful. And that's how you want to feel yeah. if you're, you know, hanging out in the kitchen a little too long. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You're washing those dishes, it better be cute around me, right? Yes. So um, when you say it's the best picture you've mm. ever seen and you've been at Benjamin Moore for how many years, <laughs> I usually perk up and pay attention. Like you love that kitchen. I love that it's because it's simple. It really shows yeah. how it's just the color mm -hmm. that changes it. I'm sure it's a beautiful island, but the color is what really draws your eye. Pops. And actually that's an easy DIY thing for people okay. to do. We spend a lot of money in our kitchen, but you don't have to to elevate the look if you're just looking for a change. So yeah. I show painting kitchen cabinets all the time on City Line. So it's the same idea if you're painting your island, whether it's wood or it's laminate, you've got to do mm -hmm. all that prep. You've got to prime, you, sorry, you want to clean, yes. you want to sand, and then you want to prime. Right. So if it's laminate, especially you want to use a super sticky primer, like um, a bonding primer like sticks. Yep. And then you got to make sure you use a paint that's made for cabinets. So okay. not just your wall paint on this. You want it to be more durable. So yeah. I always love Benjamin Moore's Advanced, the Waterborne Alkid, because okay. I love the finish on it. Mm -hmm. And then if you want something purely acrylic, the cabinet coat is a great option, and you can get any color. Yes, because we're thinking we're thinking there's going to be oil splashing. Well, exactly. There will be pasta sauce around. So yep. if you're just using regular wall paint, it's not going to give you the barrier no. you need for your kitchen. It, Kitchens get messy and they should. Exactly. So yeah, you really want to pay attention to that, but then you can choose any color you want and yeah. there you go. It's a weekend project. If you're doing the whole kitchen, you might want to get a professional. Yes. Um, but She's it's, looking it's, at me yeah, she knows like, there's no way I'm doing that myself. Okay, I'm picking up the phone. Boop, 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 boop. Please come and do my kitchen island. Okay, now if you don't want to do paint, yeah. let's talk tiles. Yes. They're, like I just think tiling looks so gorgeous. It's is so there's so many beautiful options yeah. now, right? Like you get inspired by what you might do on your backsplash, but why not consider tiling the, the base of the island beautiful. as an accent piece? So there's so many options. I picked some really beautiful ones that I fell in love with that Euro tile. And yeah. they just remind me of my trips to Portugal Absolutely. and Italy. So I really wanted to bring that in. And you can imagine, again, if you can tile yourself, go for it. You can do this, a lot of texture. Yeah. But you can also paint the look of tile trace. If you look down on the other side of the island there. Look at this. I use stencils. That is absolutely right? stunning. And if you look at it, I mean, this is Inspir an actual oh tile. That looks so much like it from here. Yeah. <laughs> you, should, awesome. you should absolutely be patting yourself in the back right now, Sharon Greg. <gasps> look at what she did. So she took a stencil and did basically the same thing you get from a tile. And I'll throw in, these are heavy. They're heavy. So and they have to be installed. They so do. So it might be nice to do something that's paint if you've got a steady if hand. If it's a DIY, you can totally do it yourself. And yeah. again, I, I use Blue Nova. So I use Benjamin nice. Moore's Color of the Year because I yeah. thought it would look fantastic with White Dove. But of course, you can use any other color. Yeah, absolutely. So Isn't here are the great? stencils and they stick on. Um, and so that you guys just have to give it a bit of time for it to dry, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, so tiling, so. a lovely thing to do. But what about beadboard? So beadboard is another inexpensive way to add some texture. You can get four by eight sheets at most yeah. big box stores, so you could easily wrap the entire island. I painted ours with Polar Sky to bring a nice sort of pastel fresh feel into the into the pretend kitchen that we're designing here. Yes, it is absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. And there's just something very coastal um, about that about that look. The color, right? The and the look, and you're right. the color. It's yeah, the there's texture. something about it. I love the texture of that. So really, really simple. Okay, so moving right along, um, let's talk patterns <laughs> because there's just something about herringbone Bring it on for backsplash, for tile, for wood, for hardwood, flooring, right? it's, anything. It's it definitely just, having a moment. It's beautiful. <laughs> it never goes out of style. No, it's true. It's, it's classic, never wrong. And I think we're seeing it with wood on floors and people yeah. doing interesting things with it. But I thought it would be really fun to do for an island to get that sophisticated texture. But it's we gorgeous. just, you might need a carpenter for this one. Like this is our, yes. not your average DIY. But we just used MDF. Okay. quarter inch MDF, cut it down into strips, and you can see then you can paint it. Nice. And by painting it Regent Green, it yeah. becomes very sophisticated. It looks like a really gorgeous panel. And again, once you use the MDF, you could cut it into just bricks and you could stack it. You could do all sorts of different patterns. But, yeah. you know, it's the color, I think, that really makes it fancy, yes. too. It is the color that makes it fancy. Okay, you've got uh, a little bit more for us as well because you did something beautiful in your kitchen, in didn't you? In my kitchen, when I did it last year, Trace, I don't yeah. know if you remember, but the island, I used these really beautiful walnut hexagon tiles that beautiful. I bought on Etsy. This is a great DIY project. You can, they'll 
help you sort of get them cut, you know, the size that you need, or oh, if nice. you're handy, you can do that yourself. They come in PVC, different colors, there's some metallics. So again, I just did that as an accent on the bottom of the island. I love it. And then I painted the rest of the cabinet with ashwood moss, yes. or the rest of the kitchen with ashwood moss. So it was a nice contrast, and it's again, it's about that color, the yeah. texture, the dimension that draws your eye to that island, so it's not just functional. I love the dimension of it. So you can see certain pieces popping out, because they're all different uh, depths. They're all different or they're all depths, depth. yeah, exactly. So, nice. so it was a fun, it was a fun sort of jigsaw project. <laughs> Love that. Okay, now you know how to elevate your island, and Sharon wants to help you all spruce up your kitchen, so you're all going to take home a $100 Benjamin Moore gift card to get you started. Enjoy that. Thank you. That was a very good lesson. Let's go to break. There's more coming up. Stay with us. Coming up, how to breathe new life into a stale space. I picked this mustard color That's here. That's so good. Like, there's the pop of color. space easier than ever wave goodbye to the bland and hello to the grand here with her five tips on turning the ordinary into extraordinary it's jackie glass who i've missed Miss you. she's back we're gonna get to your tips in a minute uh but first lena wrote us asking for a bit of help so this is a viewer question Lena says, I'm seeking advice on our formal living dining room by the main entrance. It's currently underutilized. It feels unwelcoming. The furniture needs updating, and I'm unsure about the window treatments, as I'd like to showcase our beautiful wooded backyard. So let's take a look at Lena's space so we can see uh, what she's talking about. And I love when you send your pictures and your videos <clears throat> into St City Line. There we go. So Jackie, we are gonna be talking about how to update a space. Yes. We'll use Lena's question as a focal point, and your first tip is think paint. Just Absolutely. like Sharon Greck would say, paint. Absolutely, paint. Yeah. Paint can just do so much in any space, outside yeah. or inside. So in Lena's space, if you look at her dining room, let's start with that. Yeah. She has a very traditional dining room suite. Mm -hmm. The buffet hutch, she has a curio, she has the table, the formal chairs. Yeah. And she even has sort of a ladder and a table that has a lot of collectibles on it. So right. if we're going to employ the use of paint, let's paint out a couple of her pieces. Now, she's got a curio, I would paint that. Mm -hmm. She has a buffet hutch, mm -hmm. I would paint that. Mm -hmm. Now, I would consider not using the hutch, but if she really has to store those collectibles, then let's paint the hutch. Right. But I have some other ideas for that. But anyways, okay. so what color would I paint it? Well, I looked at her living room fabric, and from that, I took some colors because this is what I would paint that buffet hutch and that curio. Mm -hmm. I would be painting it, here's the color, I'm painting it fog mist, which is OC31, and then the walls, I'm going to do a little bit darker, grant beige, mm -hmm. which is 80, uh, HC83. Mm -hmm. And you can see they're slightly different. I want it to be very, very subtle. Yeah. And I'm not painting out the table. Okay. So I'm going to leave that wood. So we're not taking everything out. And paint nowadays, painting furniture, is very, very simple. If you're a, a DIYer, you can do it. Yeah. Or you can go to a place like My Back Shed, yeah. who also has made a beautiful store filled with painted old pieces. Mm -hmm. So the piece that you're standing beside is from My Back Shed. And what I oh, love about nice. this piece is that, A, I wanted to show you how cool this kind of modern, fluted table looks. It could work in a traditional setting. Mm -hmm. it, could, it could actually work in Lena's space, and yep. it would also work in a very modern space. Absolutely, so paint, and a lot of people are sort of like, ooh, I don't know if I should paint the wood, because yep. the wood is natural. You don't need so much wood in your space, though. No, you don't, because it's balance. You need some balance, and also if you want to keep your furniture, oh my gosh, paint is like dramatic, a dramatic way to change it up. Absolutely so I is. love that advice. Absolutely. Your next tip is to think about large scale, interesting pieces like, uh, like interesting pots. Absolutely, okay, so there's a whole organic movement. We've seen yeah. it. People now take the old, mix with the new, and really big pots that are unusual, things that, that are um, you know, vessels that right. we now use and pop a great big tree. So that's the other organic element. We're putting lots of plants back into our space. Mm -hmm. You know, hanging plants, lots yeah. of trailing plants. The ficus fig has a, a big, big, you know, it's a star in the room. Right. And so popping those into corners. So if we take out that table that's sort of to the right of that buffet hutch in Lena's space, yeah. I would put in a beautiful tree. And I would yeah. pay attention to the kind of pot, like something that I have here in my vignette. Like a really big earthy looking pot can look really 
amazing yes. in the right color. In fact, she could even paint it one of those colors like Grant Beige to again further tie in the room. Yes. So that's a really, really important you know, piece to add. Now the other thing is that foraging and we talk about it every fall, mm -hmm. but to go and to clip some branches. So Lena has a lot of different pots. I would take those smaller pots and I would group them in a row yeah. on the dining table. And then I would get a really beautiful branch. Don't put flowers in all of them, mm -hmm. but go to a place like your local florist. I mm -hmm. love going to True Flowers. I will order a beautiful branch of the season that I can put in one of my vases and again have that really organic feel. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. There's no wrong place for any kind no. of a plant or no. a wildlife in your house. It's beautiful. No. Uh, your next tip, incorporate art. That's tip three. Art is super important mm -hmm. and it can really, really elevate a space. Um, one of the things that in this vignette that I wanted to share with you is look at how graphic this art is and it's yeah. simply black and white. Yeah. And that, because it's an achromatic, it's not a color, it doesn't impact a space, that has huge drama in a mm -hmm. space. In Lena's, if she doesn't use the hutch, I would put an amazing mirror with an amazing frame. Yes. And in the living room, her picture's a little bit small over the sofa. Yeah. Make it bigger, reframe it if you love the art, but or get a bigger piece of art that really speaks to you and make it about six inches on either side in terms of the, the length. Right. And no higher than nine inches behind the back of the sofa. So really make Hang it an attractive space. Very yeah. nice. Uh, tip four, and I'm a big believer in this one, lighting. Lighting. Especially, lighting, lighting. yeah, as I get older, I want more. More layered lighting, <laughs> please. So Balance. let's talk about later, layered lighting and, yes. and how she should be doing that. Okay, so when I looked at Lena's space again, let's go back to that dining room. The one thing there were, where she could really elevate the dining room space is her chandelier. Right. So I did select one from Union Lighting that I mm -hmm. thought was really beautiful. You see mm. how it's kind of art deco -y, modern, but it's still traditional. Yeah. Got that little bit of gold, a little bit of crystal. It runs the length of the table, yeah. and it's a little bit different. It's a nice, a little bit different to the traditional aspect of the room. Right. Yeah. Okay, final tip. Final Take tip. one piece and make it sort of a special standout Absolutely. in the space. So if it's a hall, yeah. you know, in your shop, like I picked this mustard color that's chair. That's so good. Like there's the pop of color. Yes. And so that's what I chose as that piece. That's yeah. what makes it special. It could be an amazing lamp. Mm -hmm. It could mm -hmm. be, and then you can just accent with neutral pieces. I'm going to pick this up so you can really see the beauty. It's gorgeous. Of the chair. The beauty of the chair. Without the paint swatches. Yeah, it could be, like in Lena's case, it's it lovely. could be that beautiful chandelier. Yeah. It could be a coffee table she has a very small ottoman uh -huh. make it a bigger coffee table make it two tiers yes. mix up the finishes a soft champagne finish that will really add just a beautiful look to her space and really elevate it jackie thank you for that and keep those questions coming i love that these are great tips thank you lena so jackie you're actually going to take us on a tour of the glen aaron in spa that you recently updated using a lot of the tips that we just chatted about right here yeah. I'm at the Glen Aaron Inn and I was delighted to be the designer on the renovation project. Now the inn was originally a private residence and it was built in 1927. In 1987 it became officially an inn. Now I'm standing in the lobby and one of the things that I noticed and took my inspiration from was this beautiful stonework because it wasn't a great use of space, it was very, very dark. So in order to really make a punctuation point out of the stone, I painted and I used silver satin so I painted out all of the ceilings, all of the trim work and I accented all of the doors as well in Iron Mountain, another great Benjamin Moore color to really accentuate and add some definition to all that stone. Now one of the things I did retain was keeping that fireplace a focal point. So I used these beautiful circular banquettes and I used a deep rich navy velvet. I wanted to be very luxe. The channeling on the back is also a very gentle homage to Art Deco because the inn was built in the 20s. So I thought adding some soft golds and adding lush fabrics and channeled materials as well as in the reception desk area would really play a, a quiet elegance and sophistication to the space. This is the luxury suite and it encompasses a seating area, bedroom area and a beautiful ensuite. Now, the before was really dated, really dark, so I really wanted to brighten it up. So I used a very consistent color scheme, and I've used that in all the rooms. I've used a taupe that plays off the beautiful stonework, corals and or navies, and lots of neutrals. Now, the millwork that I used was either a wood grain or a painted finish. Again, those tones play off the flooring as well as that beautiful stone. 
This suite is a special occasion suite. And so we actually combined two rooms to make it even bigger. So the bedroom is a lot bigger than the original. Now, it's so important to have beautiful linens when you're in a hotel, and I chose imported Portuguese white linens through the whole inn. Now, I also, in this room, did the beautiful coral tones because I felt that it was really fitting for such a special space. This bathroom was such an amazing transformation. Now, I love creating a spa setting for all of my clients, and this was no exception. So you've got your standalone bathtub, your big, generous vanity, double sinks, huge, huge walk-in shower, your porcelain tiles that kind of mimic marble. All of this creates such a beautiful, soothing environment for anyone having a special occasion here. Coming up, I get a cake frosting lesson and prove to be a natural. Just keep turning, huh? Yeah, you keep your piping bag <laughs> in place. Just doesn't quite look like yours. <laughs>to unleash a brand new you. Wow, you're like a million bucks. <laughs> CityLine's Glam Squad wants to give you the makeover of your dreams. Head to cityline.tv and click on the makeover tab or just scan the code on your screen. Oh my goodness! Your new look is only a click away. She's a beauty. I want to make one just like it. And that's why Joti Nanra is here, okay? <laughs> Educator, and there's nothing more tantalizing than a perfectly frosted cake, but there is like there is some education involved in in creating the perfect frosting for the cake, and we're gonna we're gonna walk through how to get that perfect finish. We're gonna talk about all of it, all the things, all the things. So when it comes to the buttercream, yeah, you always want to use a quality buttercream. So what we're using today is a Swiss meringue buttercream. God, it smells good. It's so good, and oh. it's, there's so much vanilla in it. It's yes, divine. Okay. Um, so it's a meringue-based buttercream, lots of egg whites, mm. sugar, butter, so it gets really nice and hard in the fridge, so you're not really worried about it setting up. Okay. Sometimes standard American buttercreams don't set up as nicely. Right. So using a meringue-based buttercream with a high butter content yeah. and like really nice airy flavor is just going to help you get that perfect, nice finish. Butter tends to fix everything. Everything. Right? Just all you need is butter. butter. That's, That's what it. you need. That's all. Okay, so we have the very good, high-quality buttercream. Yes. We're going to start with cake. We are. And and so you've got the cake layers. Um, the, the biggest thing that's shocking to me is that they are freezing cold and hard. They're frozen. They're frozen! They're straight out of the freezer. Okay, yes. why do we do that? So I freeze all my cakes. I've been freezing all my cakes for the last five years since I discovered this. So you bake your cake, you let it cool to room temperature, yeah. you wrap it in cling film while it's still slightly, like a touch warm. Okay. And that seals in all the moisture in the cake. So you're gonna have the moistest, Layers, mm. it's just gonna be divine. It's not gonna be dry at all. Okay, so what if I decide I'm just, I'm gonna put it in the fridge because I wanna cool, that doesn't work. The fridge has a very low temperature. It's just gonna dry all that moisture out. The <gasps> freezer freezes all that moisture in. Okay. And so then you have these gorgeous moist cake layers. Are you saying you knew that already in the audience? She's like, obviously. <laughs> no, okay, just checking, just check. Cause I didn't know, you're supposed to freeze the cake. Okay, so we take it out of the freezer. We take it out of the freezer. We yes. have beautiful cake layers. And and another secret to why I love the freezer is yeah. while we're icing our cake, okay. um, this the buttercream and the cake layers actually start to set up. So have you ever iced a cake where you're like fighting the layers and the layers are like every single time? It's so challenging because right? the cake has been warm. The cake's warm. I didn't know. Or like it's soft and mm -hmm. your buttercream just isn't setting up. Yeah. So the freezing cake layers is just gonna help the whole process. Good. So much. Yeah. Why did I do this? Because we're gonna pop our cake oh, okay. layer. I'm just right copying you. I'm just copying you. I don't know why. I love it. Okay, amazing. And then I popped this buttercream into the piping bag. It's so much easier to frost this way. Of course, you could use a, uh, your off set spatula and this bowl of buttercream, mm -hmm. but this is just gonna make it easier. So grab your turntable. Mm -hmm. Wicka, start wicka, wicka. start <laughs> right in the middle. I love it. Start I'm right sorry. in the middle. <laughs> okay. And you're going to just apply an even amount of pressure okay. while you turn. Just keep turning, huh? Yeah, you keep your piping bag <laughs> in place. Just doesn't quite look like yours. <laughs> She tries with me, folks. She does. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you. I, I was it. fishing for that. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what 
we're gonna do with yours is we're gonna grab our offset spatula and I'll do it. the same thing with mine is 90 degrees to your cake, so just flat like this, mm -hmm. and just spin your cake. Okay. And it gives you, <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. like look how beautiful and smooth that, that is becoming. It's becoming smooth and beautiful, okay? It is, <laughs> that's perfect. Okay. Beautiful. So now grab the uh, grab your second layer yep. and this rounder side down. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, because so you we have want that the nice top flat, to be straight. Really nice and flat. Okay. So then just pop that guy. You can sandwich it a little bit. Oh, that's... this is my kind of sandwich, everybody. Right. So good. Yes. And now what you're gonna do is we'll grab the rest of this guy. Okay. And see this little gap here? We're just gonna fill oh, it. In. Okay. Yeah. Fill in the gap. gap. Beautiful. Okay. And now we're gonna grab our offset spatula. You're ready to be a mom, by the way, if that's what you're, if you're planning on having kids. Like, I feel good. Yeah. And I know it's Yay. terrible. Okay. Yeah. No, it's not <laughs> terrible. <laughs> that's good, It's Tracy. not terrible at all. I love it. I love you for that. So you're just smoothing this out Should now. I be doing this? Like, look yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah? So we're gonna just grab this buttercream. Okay. Are we gonna, gonna eat it yet? No. We can eat it. But a we're little just gonna, bit. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Mmm. Oh God, that. Oh. <laughs> so this Nothing is. Nothing happened. Don't look at the carpet. When you work with <laughs> buttercream, you really do have to just be prepared to make a mess, and it's fine. You're and gonna that's make fine. a mess. It's yeah. all going in the same place. Literally. Okay. This so, is what I want to ask about the buttercream. Yeah. That should be room temperature. That should always be room temperature. Yeah. Fair. Okay. Let's go into our bowl of buttercream yes. here. And now. Oh Lord, three minutes left. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. Okay. So we're put this on fine. top. Yeah. We're dolloping that on top. Okay. Uh, wrong spatula. Oh dear. Okay. This one. <laughs> Okay, so let me put that on here. Beautiful, and then, okay, use your turntable so that you, yeah, you just work less when you use your turntable. Just Very spin true. It. Spin I it. want one of these contraptions at home. It makes me feel like, I am oh, gonna buy you one, you need you. one. And then you have to bake cakes. Oh, right, And <laughs> there's then, that part. <laughs> and then the same buttercream, we're just gonna sort of go around the edges of our cake. Oh, we want to cover the whole thing, we? want to cake, so what we're doing is we're making a naked cake, a semi-naked cake, so you see, you see the layers, mm -hmm. but you're locking in all of the crumbs that often fall off a naked cake. We want to lock in all those crumbs, okay. but still have that really nice, rustic, naked cake look. Oh, mine's looking rustic, all right. Oh, yours looks beautiful, okay. Okay. Bench scraper. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, sorry, moving right along. Yeah. Okay, bench scraper. Bench scraper. Yeah. 90 degrees to your cake. Yeah. And we're just gonna spin this guy. Oh, yeah. But don't take it off. Uh, it, some of it's gonna come off, but okay. you're gonna end up with a nice, clean. This is good. Right? Uh, it cleans it up. Yeah. And then you can just. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Something went right. Okay. So now our next step, I guess. Let's we've... clean up the top. Okay, let's so clean let's it up. grab our um, little offset spatula, and I yep. give you a little piece of paper towel there. You can just use oh, that that's to what wipe that's it. For. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got it. And then we're just gonna get. You can get to eye level. It just makes it better, okay. easier. And then you're just gonna scrape off the top. I like to wipe between. Jody, we have a minute left. <gasps> okay, Make we're... it look pretty. It's gonna be gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> So we want to do we want to do some of the uh, on the top designing. Yes. So why don't we why don't you show me what this is about? Okay. Is this the next step. Yes. So you can drip. I wouldn't yeah. drip ideally at this stage, but that's fine. <gasps> we're gonna drip because okay. we're here for that. Yeah, we are. Okay. So you're gonna grab a little bit of chocolate. Yeah. And I'm gonna do one, and then you do the rest. Okay. So you just literally are gonna pop it onto the top of the cake. Uh huh. And you guide it off the edge. Gosh, this smells good. Pure and then chocolate. it just drips down. Oh, that's how you do it. Yeah. It's very particular. It you is. You can just throw the whole you thing on top. You can also do that, and then we can just see how it turns out. No, that's okay. <laughs> so that's what you did? Yeah, just push it gently off. <gasps> yes, I love that. Just a gentle nudge. I love that. Look at that. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, so pretend we've done that all around. What's our next step? Our next step is piping. So I'll give yes. you this burgundy. Thank you. And I will do this yellow. Okay. So I'm gonna show you something on our uh, little plates here. So when you're piping anything, yeah. essentially you wanna apply pressure, dollop, and lift. Okay. Oh, that worked. 
Okay. Good job. I love that. And does it matter what my no. designer pattern Whatever is? Whatever you want to do. I'm going to do a little. I'm going to do three of those. And then <laughs> I'm going to do some light pink. And then, oh, look at what you did. I want to do that too. I'm just going to pretend. That's I don't know. That's amazing. Right? It was all Tricky. part of my plan. <laughs> I love it's it. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. No, it's not. It looks incredible. It actually wow. looks really good. Was that your first time piping? That was my, well, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, but you've got beautiful dehydrated raspberries yeah. here. You can have some fun. I really actually want to use these just yes. because they look delicious. And I Pop know we have to go to break now. Uh, please give it up for Jyoti. She's an amazing <laughs> educator. She's incredible. Maybe we'll work on this a little bit more later, but it's not bad at it. all. We'll it be right amazing. back. Coming up, we're checking out a stunning new bathroom space. Our client works in the fashion industry, so, you know, that chic Parisian vibe really made sense as a look to aim for. Welcome back, everyone. Our makeovers continue on City Line, and next we're heading to a home that Tamara Robbins Griffith is making over for her clients. T, how are you doing, and how's it going over there? It's going great. I can see the finish line, and I can't wait to show you a beautiful space here. Okay, they've been living in the basement for a while now. Um, how much longer before they can come up for light? <laughs> Okay, well, I'm, I'm happy to report that uh, they've moved back upstairs and, you know, there's some details that we're finishing, but it's a livable space. And, uh, you know, I still can't believe that this family of four with, like, big kids lived in a their one-bedroom basement apartment for over a year and a half, but they saved so much money that they were able to then put back into the renovation. And one of the spaces I'm going to show you is um, the beautiful ensuite in their new addition. You haven't even given me the tour yet, and I'm saying right now that is worth sleeping on top of each other for a year and a half. Like, that looks beautiful. Right? <laughs> so space and layout were a challenge for this room, right, T? Yes, so definitely a design challenge. This bathroom is only five feet wide. I can touch the, I can touch it with my arms <laughs> stretched out, but we really wanted it to feel open and luxurious. So we could have had the shower and tub at either side of the room separate, but that would have meant that the toilet had to be right beside the tub and one of those spaces would go without the natural light of this window. So what we decided to do was to combine the tub and shower into a big, bright, wet area. That also enables us to, you know, have the toilet out of sight and out of smell <laughs> and, you know, really make the most of this space. So also instead of having, you know, a shower door here, we have a single pane of glass to keep things open. And then of course the vaulted ceilings kind of give the illusion of more space as well. Oh my gosh, vaulted ceilings, always a vibe, always looks very luxurious. Now, the parents I know wanted a modern Parisian style bathroom. Tell us about that. So, you know, from the beginning of this project, we've been really inspired by the mix of old and new, modern and traditional, and our client works in the fashion industry. So, you know, that chic Parisian vibe really made sense as a look to aim for, especially with the kind of beautifully veined stone and tile from Seat and these, you know, unlacquered brass plumbing fixtures. These will develop a beautiful patina over time. Uh, we've repeated that a lot of places. So the other thing we've done to really elevate the space is build a custom vanity. That's one of the main focal points. I love the contrast between this neolith and the walnut vanity fronts. And so this countertop is a sintered stone. It's more durable than porcelain. And what's great about that is it's totally non-porous, it's stain and heat resistant. So you're not worried about spilling, you know, getting toothpaste stains. I know like face serum and facial oils or even your hot hair tools. It's kind of like beautiful and functional. And then of course with this uh, vanity, we also have a really, really big mirror here that adds to that open feeling. 
Yeah, I love when you've got low maintenance, beautiful uh, countertops. Oh, they're loving it. Oh, are you laughing because you see Jeff, the cameraman? He needed to make an appearance. Okay, what is the color yeah. palette for this space, uh, T? Okay, so at Current Field, we definitely love color and we've had it on the show before, but this is really, you know, a soothing, neutral space. It's an exercise in texture and tone on tone, the combination of white and cream and gold and wood. And, you know, I love that. And then we have this veining repeated in the wall tiles here. It echoes our countertop, but we really wanted to break up the sameness of that and do something different with the floor. We've done a herringbone floor tile that actually mimics the hardwood herringbone everywhere else in the house. And I think when you're going with a monochromatic palette like this, that's where it's interesting to have this combination contrast of like sheen, so the floor is really glossy and matte here, and that adds depth and dimension. You're going for texture instead of color as your sort of tool. We have like just like seconds left, T. So I just want to ask you quickly, ah. adv adv I know it goes fast. What advice would you give to families that are having to live in the house in the basement when the reno was happening? Anything you want to throw out there? I would say plan for contingency when it comes to time and money. You know, ironically, makeovers are usually not like it looks on TV. Things yeah. get completed <laughs> in phases and stages. So talk to your designer or contractor. Have a real conversation to make sure your expectations are realistic. Love that, Tamara. Okay, well, hold on. Can we see Jeff before we go? Like, come on, Jeff, give us one more cameo. Look in the mirror, Jeff. Look in the mirror. <laughs> they Jeff, see you, come Jeff. Come on, come on. There he is, everybody. Okay. More City Line after this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Coming up, it's your chance to ask the experts or the person sitting next to the experts. First question uh, is for me, actually. <laughs> Elizabeth, what do you what do you want to ask me? When we have pros in the house, we like to let the audience ask you questions because you all know a lot of stuff. So the first question uh, is for me, actually. <laughs> Elizabeth, what do you what do you want to ask me? Well, uh, my daughter's getting married next year, and I'd like to have a, an idea what to wear as the mother of the bride. Aww. I love this question. Because I think the mother of the bride, obviously, you're not trying to uh, overshadow the bride, but I think you need to lean into your personality. Like, are you a wild woman? Yeah. Are you more, like, are you more into <laughs> creams and warm colors? Like, whatever you are, you should wear that versus leaning into what they always push to you mm. as a mother of the bride look. Because there's a certain look that they give you as the mother of the bride. It's gonna be navy blue. It's, you know what I mean? It's gonna have a shawl. It's gonna have like a pashmina. Don't do that if that's not you. Like you do what you are. If you're cocktail, you wear a cocktail length. If you're leopard print, you wear leopard print. That's what my mom oh. wore to my wedding. I was like, Miss Marjorie Moore, what are you doing today? She was doing leopard from head to toe, and you know what? It's her. So, so do that, okay? All right. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Okay, this question actually is for Jyoti. Uh, Mira has a question for you. Hi, Mira. What would you like to ask Jyoti? Hi. Um, my question was um, a baking question, actually. Okay. I baked a cake once, and uh, it didn't really turn out that well because uh, it was vegetarian day, and um, we don't um, use eggs, you know, in cake. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make a vegan cake. Mm -hmm. So I baked the cake without the eggs, and it turned out flat. Mm -hmm. So please tell me what I could have used instead of the eggs to make it a look beautiful cake. Yeah, how do you make it fluffy without okay. the eggs? So... Eggs are a huge part of like a really, really good cake, but yeah. you can also use um, things like a really good quality butter substitute if you're keeping it vegan or use room temperature butter. You also wanna make sure your rising agents are rising. So it sounds like your baking soda or baking powder, whatever you are using, wasn't activated. 
And the way to activate that is sift your flour and your rising agent together into a bowl. Okay. And you wanna use some form of acidity. So whether that's a buttermilk, apple cider vinegar, mm -hmm. using high quality ingredients, things that are a little bit higher in fat are gonna make up for the eggs. Oh. And using a little more of your rising agent and like sort of whisking it in is gonna give you a little more rise. Oh, that's yeah. great. Good. Yeah, you need something to create that fluff, right? Yeah. You do. Yeah. I love it. Okay, okay. next question Dang is chemistry. for uh, Jax and Sharon. Elizabeth uh, has a question for you. Hey, Elizabeth. What Hi. would you like to ask? Yeah, I'm renovating my cottage, sort of the kids' room at my cottage, and I'm wondering what I should do. Uh, my question is what to do about an accent wall, and should your accent wall be where the window is or a different wall. Um, I'm just wondering what suggestions you may have for that room. That is a cute room, That is a really Elizabeth. cute room. Oh, I need four that, beds in there. Yeah. That's awesome. At first I thought wow. it was just two. That's amazing. That's fine. That's great. Well, I know that the in that space, the window wall is definitely where the accent wall should be. And I'm, I'm sure we agree yeah, on that, Yeah, right? it makes sense. And I think that as far as color, I would do something a little bit more dramatic in that room because of the shape, whether it's like a denim blue or... I do see blue. I think, right? Because yeah. there's lots of really fun pops of color in mm -hmm. the bed linens and such so I think like make it kind of poppy yeah, yeah. so I was it's looking at West blue. Coast I think that's West Coast <laughs> I was looking at West Coast yeah. as a nice option but that's one thing lovely. that you should do in that case you you don't want to break it up with the window trim so I would paint the trim, the trim on the window the exact same color so that when you're looking it's an accent wall and then you see the beautiful outdoors yeah, yeah. Okay. That's Absolutely. Really nice. Painting out the trim, I think, just grows. It's a really seamless wall because you, it is broken up by the windows. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes sense just to try. Sometimes we also paint baseboard out. Yes, right? exactly. You just don't want that band of trim color to kind of glare Become at you. Stripey. Or if there's a cove mold, you just paint it all out. Yeah. Gives the illusion of a, just a clean, broad space. I think you can have a lot of fun in, number one, it's the kids' space. Number two, it's the cottage. Yeah. So yeah. that's really nice that you can keep it festive and fun for them. They're probably having the best memories in that room. Exactly. Four beds in there? <laughs> I know. Yeah. That is awesome. There will be a lot of sleeping. Yeah. There's no sleeping in the kids' room at the cottage. I love all of your questions. Thank you, uh, Thank you. for that. And we love to hear from all of our viewers at home. We love it when you send us details. Give us the questions, but give us the video. Give us the pictures. We want to be all up in your business, okay? <laughs> Send them to cityline.tv and keep the questions coming. Right now, it's time for a break. Stay with us. We've got a little bit more coming up. Good answers. Good answers. City Line's experts can help you. We're looking for suggestions. What would you recommend? What tips might you have? With everything from decor dilemmas. I'm wondering if you can help me with a sunken living room. Fashion finds. And what to wear as the mother of the bride. Fabulous food and so much more. You are in good hands. Send us your videos, pictures, and questions to submissions at cityline.tv or scan the code on your screen to get expert advice for real life. Let me know. Thanks. But we were just talking about what the mother of the bride can wear to a wedding, and Jackie was, you know, at some point the mother of the the step parent of the groom. Yes. Okay. And yeah. what did you wear to that wedding? Okay. Or how did you figure it out? <laughs> so I was very respectful of the fact that you know the biological parents, you know, mothers wanted to have the colors that worked with the bridesmaids and all of that. Mm -hmm. And in that case, it was sort of soft rose and whatever. So I did a really deep rose. I did almost like a fuchsia dress mm -hmm. and I went cocktail. So awesome. I, I totally agree with what you were saying. Yes. You know, um, do what works for you, yeah. Elizabeth. Yeah. So I love that. I love That's it. great. It worked for you and it also fit into the tone exactly. of the of the, of the yeah. party. And that is it. That's yeah. the end of home day uh, and almost the end of another week. Thank you so much to all of our experts, Sharon, Jackie, Joti, Tamara, for all the great info. Thank you to our viewers at home and our beautiful audience here. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.